From kings who were queens to lesbian lawmakers and reforming governments, Britain's history is flourished with LGBT plus figures, many of whom people want to learn more about. Let us take a look at Britain's hidden LGBTQ history. Before we move on, don't forget to drop a like. If you're new here, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to turn on post notifications. Without further ado, let's get started. In honor of LGBTQ History Month, the United Kingdom's Parliament has doubled the number of tours dedicated to the hidden history of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in response to high demand. There's obviously increased demand for the tours, a Parliament spokeswoman said, and there are now a permanent component across the calendar. The British Parliament has the most significant proportion of LGBT plus MPs globally, with 45 current lawmakers identifying as such, accounting for 7% of the total. On Monday, Pride at Parliament tour guide Ralph Spencer told the Thomson Reuters Foundation, It's a history of kings and queens and some kings who were queens. According to Spencer, Westminster Hall, which dates from 1097, was constructed by a gay guy and restored by a bisexual. Westminster Hall was unlit during the reign of King William II, William the Conqueror's third son, allowing the dark to shroud all sorts of things, according to Spencer. He noted that William Rufus, who reigned from 1087 to 1100 and was known for his red hair, accompanied a flock of male harlots acting in an effeminate manner. Several kings and queens were accused of homosexuality before. After the English Parliament was first constituted in 1215, the most famous of them was Edward II, who reigned for nearly 20 years from 1307. Spencer referred to him as the Playboy Prince, referring to his close friendship with courtier Pierce Gaveston. However, history recounts numerous regal LGBT plus personalities from the past, some of whom were even more unexpected. Richard I, commonly known as Richard the Lionheart, is rumored to have had an affair with Frances Monarch. Queen Anne was claimed to have had a strong friendship with Sarah Churchill, Duchess of Marlborough, immortalized by Oscar-winning actress Olivia Colman in The Favourite. Maureen Colquhoun became Britain's first openly lesbian member of parliament, though not by choice. She was outed by a tabloid in 1976. In 1984, Chris Smith became the first MP to come out while still in government. Following Tony Blair's election as Prime Minister in 1997, Parliament experienced a rush of LGBT plus measures. Under David Cameron's leadership, homosexual marriage became legal at the age of 16 for both gay and straight men, and the lifting of the ban on LGBT plus people serving in the armed forces. With the exception of the AIDS catastrophe, society has gotten vastly more tolerant. Dominic Jane's professor of contemporary history at Keele University said, Peter Ackroyd uncovers 2,000 years of gay London in his extraordinary book Queer City 2017, telling stories of gladiators, pirates, servants, and kings. We learn how two men would engage in a ceremony to become wedded brethren in the 13th century, how playhouses were hotbeds of lust and scandal in the 16th century, and how women carried ivory dildos disguised as dolls in the 18th century. Finding queer history in the archives can be a guessing game at times. Eckhart writes, Sexuality was a fluid, infinitely malleable, and indefinite condition. Like the smell of pies and sweetmeats, it pervaded the streets of London. He considers a case from Roman London involving two mid-twenties women buried together, each corpse curled into the other, sisters or lovers. Which is it? Which story do I prefer? People who practice same-sex love or transgress traditional gender identities have lived secret lives for most of London's history, fearing punishment and censure. It isn't because they are being prosecuted or demonized that they appear in the historical record. Since 1533, homosexual activities between men have been a crime punishable by death in England. Men who had sex with men created a vibrant subculture in London despite the significant personal risk they faced. Commonly, certain London pubs and coffee houses became popular gay meeting places, known as molly houses in the 18th and the 19th centuries. Plain reasons for the rise of sodomy in England, published in the 18th century, attributed an increase in homosexuality to men's clothing. They would emerge as soft as possible to each other, anything of manliness being diametrically opposite to such unnatural practices. The author claimed, male clothing was dark and plain beginning in the 19th century. 
gay men's flamboyant dress styles did not influence mainstream fashion until the 1960s, when it became more colorful and adventurous. More proof of historical homosexuality comes from a bleaker source. Records of men who had sex with men being prosecuted and sometimes executed. Samuel Drybutter, a bookseller in Westminster Hall, is the right-hand figure in this print. He was a public figure in 18th century London, famous for his flamboyant dress and alleged homosexuality. Dry butter was a well-known macaroni, a subculture of men who dressed extravagantly and were stereotyped as affected and unmanly in their behavior. Overall, Britain has a vast history when it comes to homosexuality. That's all for today, guys. We'll be coming up with more exciting videos. Stay tuned and turn that post notification on.